Ever wondered how to merge your designs onto mockups using Canva? Well, a big shout out to Patricia for her query regarding this topic on a recent video. It was a fantastic request, so thanks for reaching out Patricia, I'm glad to be helping you out with this. Now, given that I have no doubt that there are others out there like Patricia who have been wondering the same thing, let's get ready to dive into the magic of merging designs with mockups in just a few simple steps. No headaches, no complex maneuvers, just a smooth process to bring your designs to life and increase your social media presence with consistent, high-quality mock-ups to help increase the potential of directing more traffic to your online store. Let's make Patricia proud and, of course, help everyone else looking for the solution. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so welcome to my computer screen and as you can see here, I'm currently on Canva. In today's video, I'm going to be creating a Pinterest pin mock-up. So basically what I've done is in the search field up over here, I've typed in Pinterest pin and I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard. Canva will take me to its page where it has a number of templates in addition to a blank canvas. And it's that blank canvas that I want to use for this particular tutorial. So I'm just going to click on that. And obviously we are brought to the page where we can start creating our mockups. Now, I've already went ahead and downloaded a number of mockups from Ideogram. If you don't know how to create mockups using Ideogram, I'm gonna put up a thumbnail on the screen right now to a video I published some time ago. I'll also leave a link to that video in the description box down below so that you can watch how to go about creating free mockups using it ideogram and effectively you can basically use whatever I show you in that video on any of the other image generating uh, platforms that are out there like Midjourney and Leonardo uh, and whatnot. So um, take a look at that video after if you obviously are unaware how to go about creating mockups of your own. So let's just open up the uh, the page here where I created. So the first mockup you can see here is of a young woman wearing a plain white t-shirt in a park walking along a pavement, uh, obviously in the direction of the viewer. And what I did was I enlarged it a little bit. Obviously, if I click on the photo, you can see that there's these uh, these purple lines over here indicating that the image is larger than the canvas because obviously, as you can appreciate, I want the focus to be on the t-shirt and not on the rest of the background behind the model. And this particular case, the AI model. Um, I went down, I also asked Adeogram to create for me a flat lay t-shirt on a hanger with a concrete background. And again, for each of these particular mockups I'm showing you, Adeogram gives you, you know, four selections, or rather four choices that you can choose from. Doesn't always get it right. Uh, you might need to regenerate a couple of times until you get exactly what it is that you're looking for, but you know, it's free. So <laughs> that doesn't really matter how many times you have to generate. In my case, uh, for this one, I had to generate it twice before I got this particular photo. Um, then the other mock-up was of a white mug um, with obviously a steaming hot beverage in it, in the kitchen with some study books by its side. Here, I thought it would be really great to put a design with a nice inspirational quote on the mug. Okay, This one, as you can tell, pertains to a sticker. And then finally, we have a black bath mat. Obviously, for those of you who still sell on Redbubble, know that bath mats are one of the products of choice that you can choose from. So I decided to create a mock-up of a black bath mat in order to put um, my designs on these mock-ups. Now, in order to put your designs on these mock-ups, it is really easy to do. So let's head back to the top over here. Now I already went ahead and uploaded one of my designs here. So let's just go into uploads. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab and we're gonna click on this particular design. Now this was a design I showed how to go about creating in last week's video. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'm gonna leave the thumbnail to that particular video on the screen now and I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. It pertains to creating designs for Valentine's Day, the next major holiday that's coming up and obviously the big one for the first quarter. So if you're interested in learning how to create this particular type of design, then I wanna encourage you to go ahead and watch that video. Now I am using the paid version of Canva. And when you use the paid version of Canva, you have the facility of getting rid of the background inside Canva itself. And to do that, you just want to make sure you clicked onto the design. You're going to click on edit photo. And then after you click on it, you're going to be taken to the magic studio. And there you have BG remover. You just click on it and you allow Canva to work its magic. And as you can see, the background has been removed. Now, if you don't have the paid version of Canva, don't worry 
BG Remover has its own website and there are a number of other third-party background removing uh, websites out there. Just go into a Google search, key in background remover, and then see which one you prefer to use. You upload the design onto that website, you delete the background, and then make sure that you download it as a PNG. Because if you don't, then you're going to get a background again and you're back to square one. But since we're using the paid version of Canva, as you can see here, I've removed the background and now it's just a question of resizing your design to taste. And as you can see, Canva also gives you a lot of these guiding lines here to make sure that you are centered. And when you are happy with its placement, all you need to do is just obviously let go of your mouse pointer. What I also like to do is I also like to reduce the opacity of the design slightly. Um, I usually take it down to anywhere between 80 and 90. Obviously, it's up to you and obviously it's up to the design that you are uploading or rather trying to put onto the mock-up, which will determine how strong or how light the design should appear on the mock-up. Um, I'm at 88 and I think I'm quite happy about that. Okay, and I've got my first mock-up done. Now, the second one, this flat lay t-shirt here, um, let's just bring in a design. This was a design so that obviously it wouldn't be a very long video. I grabbed from Canva itself. Okay, we're just going to upload it onto it. As you can see here, every journey needs a first step. And just a question of resizing the design to fit, obviously, the mock-up and obviously make sure that you're happy with it. Um, it's not a very dark black in terms of color. So in this case, I'm not going to reduce the transparency of this particular design too greatly. So maybe I'll just might take it down to about 93. Yeah, that works good too as well. Just so that, you know, you, you've got that slight fold in the t-shirt behind it just to sort of merge everything in together so that it doesn't look, you know, very static or, or very cold. It's, it feels like it's part of the mock-up itself. With respect to the monk here, we're going to grab another inspirational quote. So I'm just going to upload these two as well. Dream, believe, achieve. Okay, and then again, it's just a question of resizing. And if you can see, I mean, it really doesn't take that long to do. I think the, the time that it takes is more in terms of generating the images, um, particularly if there's a lot of people who are, you know, making of a request of the particular website itself for the generation of the images. But again, these five mockups that I created off the fly a couple of days ago, Basically, I had everything done within about 10 minutes. So when you think about how many mockups you could potentially create using a platform like Ideogram or indeed any of the other AI image generating platforms that are out there, uh, you could really go to town, create a ton of social media posts, maybe on a weekend and stagger them out throughout the entire week to be consistent so that you will have an online presence. And that maybe one of the designs that you've created could be the catalyst to get people to jump over to your print on demand shop and actually make a purchase. Now, with respect to the sticker, um, I wanted to bring in a colored design. Again, this works great with colored or black and white designs. It really doesn't matter. Now, given the fact that obviously it's not vertically aligned, we want to obviously grab this handle here and start turning it around so that it will fit within the sticker and we're just going to shrink it down accordingly so that obviously it will fit. In this particular case, I wanted to have the sticker laid out on sort of this little memo pad over here. And I think with this particular color of sticker on the white background, it really looks sharp. Maybe what you might want to do is click on edit photo and maybe we want to adjust it and increase the saturation a little bit just to make it pop a little bit more. So that when people are browsing through their social media posts, they will obviously, you know, see it and stop to take a closer look. So with respect to the bath mat, we want to make sure that we have something which is going to contrast against the color of black. In this particular case, I think white would work well. Okay, so let's just see what Canva has. We're going to just type in inspirational quotes again here and we'll click see all here. Try to find something that is white. Um, let's see, love yourself and be kind. Again, you know, I'm using some designs from Canva. Obviously, the same holds true with respect to your own designs. Make sure that obviously whatever it is that you're putting up is going to be legible, is going to be easy to see so that people will be encouraged to stop and take a deeper look at whatever it is that you are trying to sell in terms of designs or whatnot. Obviously, make sure that whatever designs you put up on a mock-up are grammatically correct, are spelled correctly, particularly if English is not your dominant language, if it's not your first language, the last thing that you want to do is post a mock-up on social media with a design that has a spelling mistake, 
people will avoid it like the plague, they will not come to your shop, and if they see any of your other future designs, they will just scroll on by without giving it a second glance. Remember, first impressions are very important. If you are new to this industry, if you're just starting to get out, make sure that you cover all of your bases first before you post any mock-ups, anything on social media, so that obviously when people see your work, when they see your content, is going to be as professional as it possibly can be. And obviously that will obviously be a catalyst to encourage people to hop over to your shop in order to purchase. So let's just rotate this a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to shrink it down. Okay. And then when you're happy with it, we're going to reduce the opacity just a little bit. Let's take it down to about... Um, 86 sounds good to me like that. Okay, we'll just click outside over there. And you've got your mock-up with your design on a black bath mat. So I hope you enjoyed learning the ropes of merging your designs onto mock-ups with Canva. If you've made it this far, please comment mock-ups in the comment section down below. Now before you go, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Big thanks again to Patricia for inspiring this tutorial. Please feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. Now I'd like to invite you to click on the thumbnail appearing right now on your screen to help you to reach even more success with your print on demand business. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you there.